Folks, I think we've given people a fair amount of grace time and Dean is happy for our latecomers to come in. So would it be okay if we go ahead with the evening? Okay. And the car. Or Dan? Make him up with my car. Put away the, the camera. Okay, you're all very, very, very welcome to our non sessy meet. As in, it has a slightly different structure to the, to the usual sessy meet. You've only got two rules. There are two rules this evening. You are responsible for learning something and you are also responsible for your neighbours learning something. So I will be checking at the end of the night to see if you have done your, your duty. You all have labels. Can you turn around please and read the label on the people beside you and check out that you know their name. Say hello. Can I just bring to attention now, Pierre, and you told me this will work, and it's not working. Tosh. Um, can I just bring your attention to the fact that this is ever such a slightly different um, type of sessi meet. Normally, we have lots and lots of very short presentations. Because of the, the activity we're having tonight, we have four guest speakers, and we are so, so lucky to have the four of them. We have Damien Quinn from Sligo, some of you that teach in the Irish education system will know Damien as Shomaranga. We have Mary Farmer who is just, well, I'm just, she's just Mary Farmer, and that's it. <laughs> um, Colin Gallagher and Sarah are going to have a video presentation of their students working and then bring us through how they do it. Kieran McCormack, God knows what, we just don't know. That's another universe. And we may have one or two other slight small um, items in, in, in between. The, well, we, I think we'll just start, Damien. We'll start with the first speaker. Our first speaker is Damien Quinn. Shomaranga, he's better known as. He is one of these people who very kindly gives all of his expertise to the rest of us for nothing. And there's nothing more I can say, only say, sit back and follow him if you can. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Turn the sound off. Turn me off. Can everyone hear me okay? Here in the park, turns me on. <laughs> Do not tweet. Good evening, everyone. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to uh, do this evening is I'm just going to uh, introduce a little bit to you about the um, iPod pilot project that we're running uh, at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to give you a short demo and want to uh, show you how we use it uh, for assessment. Uh, first thing I, I thought I'd mention, um, it was interesting when I saw the uh, title of, of uh, this year's conference, Changing Landscapes, and I thought, uh, well definitely, I can only speak uh, from my own classroom, I think it has definitely changed, and certainly in the last two years. Uh, I've gone to <coughs> blogging more with the children, uh, we've done a little bit of podcasting, uh, we started uh, Twitter just last year, and it's been uh, very successful. And now with the introduction of uh, iPods in the classroom, it's certainly given an extra dimension into it. Um, the, to give you a little, uh, just short history, um, in and around this time last year, um, I think it was, um, I, I got a tweet from, from Simon there, uh, telling me about um, a, a video on YouTube where um, a class in London of eight-year-olds were using iPods in the classroom. And I went down and had a look at it, and I was absolutely blown away by uh, all of these eight-year-olds having an iPod each on the, on the table, using it all day long in the curriculum. And I, I put it on to Joe Morong and, and I think I finished off the, the blog post by saying, will this ever happen in Ireland, thinking of course that it's never going to happen. And coincidentally at the same time, uh, Mary Hock, the uh, director of our education centre in Sligo, had been over at a conference in London at which uh, she went to visit this exact same school and was relating the story to me when she came back and all of a sudden they um, we suddenly realised that we were both uh, thinking about the same thing. So she inquired when she came back to Ireland, was anything being done like this in Ireland to discover that no, there wasn't. 
So she decided, along with the, educate, the directors of uh, Kilkenny and Wexford Education Centre and Apple Ireland, to set up a, a pilot project to see how it would work in, in an Irish context. And uh, in and around this time, uh, I think it was March last year, a group of us from the three education centres uh, went over to London to that school that was on that YouTube video to have a look at them using it. And again, we were blown away by what they were able to do. So, um, so four classes in the country at the moment are, are using the iPods. Uh, I'm sure Colin and Sarah will tell you later on. I think it's been a huge su success. Um, we're using it for lots of different things. We're using it, of course, you have full internet access on it. So we're using it for uh, research on the internet, a whole range of educational apps to um, enhance the curriculum, all different curricular areas. And of course, we're uh, using some games as well. Um, what has, it, what has happened in the classroom? Well, I suppose increased motivation would certainly be uh, a huge factor. And then that's not to say that the children were not motivated beforehand. Yes, they were, but it certainly increased their motivation and their willingness to learn. Um, it also enhances uh, the whole uh, area of differentiated learning because children can learn at their own pace and uh, they're, while they're doing their own thing. Uh, a willingness to explore, to collaborate, uh, to teach each other, to teach me. There's a great uh, two-way learn, three-way learning process because they're teaching each other, they're teaching me, and I'm, I'm teaching them as well. So it's a fantastic collaboration between us all. Um, some of the remarks made by the children about using the iPod in the classroom, they've said things like, um, I think it's helped my learning because I know more facts. Uh, they're way more educational than you think. I feel we learned more since I had them. Learning is more fun. Uh, it makes school easier and more fun, and I like that word fun when you're talking about learning as well. Uh, I find out things faster, said one child. It's exciting using iPods in the school. The apps get you concentrating, and iPods will help you enjoy your work. And to hear eight, eight and nine-year-olds saying that, I thought was fantastic. It, it's been an equally positive response from uh, the parents as well. Uh, they said things like, it's greatly enhanced my child's learning experience. It's the way of the future and has given, our, uh, given my child a head start with this type of learning. It adds fun and adventure to learning, said another. It has broadened my child's knowledge of the internet and accessing information. And another said they learned while they felt like they were playing, which again I thought was a fantastic comment. So what I'm going to do with you tonight, it's going to be really, a really practical session. Um, it, well, I'm going to show you how, just one way that we use iPods in the classroom for assessment. And it's using uh, Google Docs on the on the iPod. Uh, Kieran, you might be able to help me here if you can, please. Just, just get some. Right. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay. So, in um, to set up a Google Doc, you just need a, a Google account. So, uh, and that's pretty easy to do. Uh, set up a Gmail account. And when you've set up, you go into, uh, into your account, and uh, can everybody see there, follow me, you just go uh, more, and you go, into, you go into Docs. When you're in Docs, you click Create New and Form. Okay? So you come up with something like this. So you give your, your form a heading. So for example, Sessie Meet. You can include any instructions here that you wish. Okay, and you simply type in a question. So, for example, um, where are we? Okay, and you have lots of different types of answers you can you can uh, you can give. If you click on here, uh, you can have a text answer, uh, just for a very short piece of text, a paragraph text for writing something longer. You can have multiple choice questions, check boxes. You can have choose from a list type answers. Okay, so for example, if we say uh, where are we? We'll ask for um, uh, check boxes. So option one. Okay. Uh, option two. You can have as many options as you wish. Okay. And uh, a nice thing that you can do is you can click here to say make this a required question so that uh, if you're doing this in class they have to answer every question. Something I, I often do just for handiness and just to make it very quick, you can duplicate here and you can duplicate the question, especially if you want to have the same number of responses for each one. And you can do that as often as you, as you wish, okay? When you choose to save it, okay, if you look at the bottom of the screen, 
Okay, you've got a, 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 a URL for your form. Okay, you can also choose a theme so that it, it looks nice. So you've got a huge range of themes here. So you can pick any one of those. So for example, if I click on this one here, here's roughly what the form will look like. Okay, and you can choose apply or cancel, whichever you wish. Okay, you can also do two things with it then. You can embed it into your blog. So if you go up onto the top right there, where it says more actions, I can choose embed. So if I choose embed, I get an iframe code to embed it into the HTML of, uh, of a blog. Okay, I figured out though that um, for, uh, for tonight that that actually doesn't, it won't work with the, with the iPod touches. So what I've, what I've done instead with the one that I've set up is just I've copied this um, URL and I've uh, put it in as a link uh, on, the, on the blog. Okay, uh, so, so what we're going to do, we're just going to get everybody uh, working on their, uh, on their iPods in a second. Um, sorry again, Kieran. Um, escape, is it? Yep. No? So uh, what I'm going to get you to do in a second is to log on to the internet on your iPods and the browser we're using is called Safari. Uh, hopefully this will work. Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to maybe split people up just so that we're not all going on to the one side. I've put a link to this form on two sides. I've put it on to Shomaranga and you can see it's the second post down there, SESI conference February the 4th. And I'm going to ask maybe, if I ask this side of the room to go on to uh, our school blog if that's possible. Uh, just so that we're not all logging in, and it's uh, Ransboro N S R A N S B O R O N S dot squellnet I E, and it should be the first post there. Okay. So it's, I, I will. I say it again. I will. I say it again. It's, it's R A N S B O R O N S. Actually, I, I have it here. And there. That's it up there, R-A-N-S-B-O-R-O-N-S dot squelnet dot I-E. And if you go into the news section. Okay, when you, go in, when you go into it, when you go into either of those, just click on where it says uh, view the form here. And I set up a little quiz for you. The other thing I just want to show you as well is that um, when, you set up, uh, when you set up a Google form, it also sets up uh, an associated uh, spreadsheet so that uh, when you come to the end of your, uh, of your form, you click submit and you should see your answers popping in uh, on the spreadsheet in front of you. Okay? Uh, we try and help you if, there, if there's a problem. Okay? So just put your hand and there are enough people around the room to help. you might have to be It may be a little bit slow with us all trying to log on at the same time, so just bear with us, please. <laughs> Okay, people are beginning to get in, but if you just have patience, they're already 
video button. So in each in, in each for each question, there are four possible answers. Okay. So have a, have a guess. Click on the radio button. They are all required answers as well. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
didn't get on earlier. There's a sec sec second internet connection now called Sessi for those who couldn't get on. And now everybody will be on. There shouldn't be any issues for the rest of the time. Okay. If you check the screen, you can see your colleagues' answers appearing. 
A dog native to French How many pupils were in ordinary classes in County Cork is 41,678 was the last answer. And the percentage turnout in the last election was 67%. Uh, and all men is a member of an ancient indigenous people of Central and South America. Okay. Uh, the Sinistra, I'm not sure if, if anybody got it right, it's somebody who's left-handed. Yeah. 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 The acronym JPEG is, it was the first answer, Joint Photography Experts Group. Right. Uh, Apple Steve, Steve Jobs uh, sold his apartment actually to Bono. Okay. Uh, the number of iPads sold uh, up, to, up as far as January 2011 is 14.8 million. Uh, CESI was formed in 1973, <laughs> and the last one, the combined age of Jaybird, Gaybarn, and Twink, it's, I, I think I have the answers right, it's 19 plus 19, for Jaybird obviously, 76 for Gaybarn, and 59 for Twink, it was 173. Okay, so that was just an example to show you um, how we use Google Talks with the iPad Touch, but I've used that with 6, 7, 8, and 9 year olds for assessing spellings, tables, Irish uh, spellings, for little quizzes, it has endless possibilities. Okay, so that's Google Docs and the iPod Touch. Okay, thank you. And Damien's going to correct all your homework, and there'll be a prize later on at the bar, whoever actually got the right, the best number of right answers. One or two, oh, and switched off. One or two just small things. The one thing that you might be interested in asking that we don't talk about during Sessie Meets is usually money and how much these things cost. But the lovely gentleman outside called Aina, who registered you for the iPod Touch, will talk, he'll talk 
availability and buying of Mary. anything you want later on. Is that okay I, with everybody? I can't remember. So don't ask us how much is that or yeah. where did it come from. Ask Aina later on in the bar. Would you all, uh, at some stage, if you have a little it, uh, break, the get on, coming there's next. a Twitter app in is there as possible? well, and maybe follow us tweets the and have a Sorry. look and get something up on the wall Somebody as well. There's a camera in that. Um, I've got touch that you're playing with as well. Okay, so you can take a photograph of the person uh, like next a, to you so we don't see what they look like. Is it, yeah, yeah. Upload it, it yeah. upload it as well. Just press okay, we're going to move on Hold with the our I'll turn it up no, 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 just second speaker of the night, which is Mary Farmer. Hi, Mary Farmer. And we know Mary as EBT35. She'll explain that to you. And I'm going to get out of the way that Mary get <laughs> working with us. I'm going to take Mary's seat. Hi there, everyone. Um, I first of all, can I say thank you hugely for inviting me here. I'm, I'm seriously honoured. This is like very cool. Um, um, I teach in a special school in London uh, for children who have severe behavioural, emotional, and behavioural difficulties. The children in the school are five to eleven, and I teach the ten and eleven year olds, um, predominantly boys. Um, Last year, I was hugely lucky on Twitter. I saw a tweet from something, somebody called RM London who said, are there any London teachers out there? I tapped in yes. And they said, would you like some iPod touches? And I tapped in yes. <laughs> and they said, um, you know, did I have any ideas on how I could use them? And I tapped in yes. And anyway, they um, arrived and he said, when would I, would I like them before Easter? And I said, how long do I have them for thinking? Four weeks, six weeks, maybe three months. And he said, no, you have them forever. So I said, I'll have them tomorrow, thank you. So we can play with them over, anyway. So we've gone from that and we use them all the time in our class. And what I'm going to do is just show you some of the ways that we use them. And it's not just in a special school, you could use them anyway. So, um, that is the start. Um, that is my class this year. That's minus one child. That's, there are nine children, but believe me, they feel like a lot more than nine. Um, we, these are just some of the apps that we put on, that I put on during the summer. If you are going to start, I wouldn't start with as many as I did because I just sort of thought that, oh, it was really exciting to get them all on, but it does become slightly confusing. Um, one of the apps that I would certainly recommend using is something called Bump, which it's, you have to, for some reason it's asking you to sign in and that, but if you just put any numbers in and any letters in it lets you sign in. And what it does is if a child uh, takes a picture from the internet or draws a picture or anything, at the moment we're only using it with pictures, and you literally bump your hands together, the picture from one iPod will bounce on to another iPod, which that's how they get, one of the ways they get their work to me is that they'll, they'll take a screenshot of anything that they do, come up to me, they get to punch me then, which they think is really good fun, and transfer it onto my iPhone. I then use something called Wi-Fi Photo, which just instantly transfers it back onto the screen so I can show them any work that they've done instantly. It's just a way of transferring instead of having to send it. Shall I stop my phone from making that noise? It's the tweets coming through. Sorry. Um, right. One of the things that I've started doing this year is combining apps, using one app and then something else and, and doing things together. So for example, we use something called Make a Martian, which should be on, I think it's page three or four of your things. It's that little funny purple guy thing. And uh, if you just tap on it, you just get to make these really silly things. And they love it. They, they love making them and they, they make all these faces and they do all sorts of things. Is everybody there doing, having a go at it? And changes color, changes spots, changes size. We did a lot of work on adjectives, on how would you describe what they looked like, um, you know, what, what their feelings would be. Oh, just any, any number of things you can do with the silly little monstery type thing. Then what they did is they would take screenshots of different ones 
and they would then use a different, a second app called um, Strip Designer, which is like a comic book thing, and put them in, and then make work, you know, make the monsters say something. So it was basically like a story plan of the work that they were going to do. They then moved from there using the straightforward notepad that's in it and just started writing stories. Now that's a tiny part of it. This boy, who does not want to write, will not write, I mean, gets very upset about all sorts of things. He wrote, I think it was about six chapters about this Martian who came from a yellow planet, a warm yellow planet called Urin. And it was all about, you know, you know, it was absolutely hysterical. We then put it on um, on my blog, and in fact, we had hits from New Zealand, literally all around the world. And each day, we'd come in, read the blog, see the work, what people had written about it. He'd go back under his table because that's where he likes to write is under a table. Don't ask me, but works for him. Um, sit under his table, and he would carry on writing chapters during his free time. I would upload it back onto the blog. Next morning, back in again. And these are kids who, you know, when I test him on, I don't know if you do levels here, but basically when he was tested in a test situation, he had the writing level of around about a five or six years old. That's not five or six year old writing when he suddenly was motivated to write and all of that. It's trying to now get the SATS people to allow us to use the iPod Touch, and I'm trying to, we're the first school that we're trying, I, well, I'm trying to see if we can't use it this year during SAT. I think I'll fail, but I'm still going to ask the question. Um, we use, have started using lots and lots of e-books, um, where, to be truthful, using them on the iPod Touch, they're slightly small, but we'll use them on the interactive whiteboard. But what they then do, again, is having them is that they'll again take screenshots, they'll talk about what the characters are doing, the emotions that they do. As I said, I'm primary, so if you're secondary, this may be, I'm not sure if it's useful to you or not, but this is certainly what we do. So they write about different feelings, they, lots and lots of work that they do in their writing. Um, these are also all story, a huge focus on trying to get writing improved in my class and in the school. And um, these are all apps that we use for that. Sonic Picks, what they do is they, they, again, lots of screenshots. They take pictures of things and it turns it into, I'm not sure, how do I make, how do I click on something? Yeah. Oh, there. Will that work? Humpty Dumpty oh, Battery. Yeah. yeah. Humpty Dumpty set yeah. an award. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men. I look forward to the moment. And all that is, is it's, it's just an app that um, it takes pictures and they, they put it in a storyboard, you know, across the, the, uh, the pictures, and they then can go back, add voice to it. And it turns what... They're just hugely proud of what comes out. It's, it's, it's just very good, I think. Um, another one is Story Kit, which if you go on to your app, when you open it up, it comes up with these quite old-fashioned looking books. But it also has one that comes up with Make Your Own Story, doesn't it? Does it say that? It's the one down here, this one, in the lower left-hand corner. Story kit. And if you go into new story, I think. I don't, I've, can I just have the iPod that's, yeah, sorry, do you mind? There should be another one on the table. Um, it's somewhere. Mm -hmm. This is somewhere. Oh, there it is, yeah. And if you go into it, you can have a go writing writing your own story. They can draw their own pictures in it. Um, is it working? Mm -hmm. This one's slow. Ah. So if you go into a new book, they can, you can go in. You can, you can type your own stories and do things, which then you can, um, what's very cool is you can then email it 
um, to somebody. So they sometimes, oops, go back, go back, go back, go back, go. Sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm having prob technical problems here. I want to click on that hyperlink down at the bottom. See, the reason being is that you asked for the screens, it messes over there. Uh huh. So there. There. Sorry. Taking screens over there because you wanted these. Oh. So it's over there. Oh, okay. So okay. This is the problem, is that you need to do that. Okay. And then, sorry. What it does is, I mean, this is literally something I, I am not an artist that I just showed up that you can do. And you can also add sound to it as well, which should come out. It was working. But if you have a go, it does work. I don't know why it's... Really, truly a brilliant app. Yeah. So, but what's nice is that the kids can do this work, email it to their parents at home that day, and have everything that they've done at home sharing it. So it's not just, we have sometimes difficulties with parents coming in. So this is a way of their work getting home to where it, um, for them to show them what they're doing. Uh. Honky donkey. Oh. Okay, this is where you're going to have fun, I think. This is something we've just started using oh, earlier this week, and it's called Puppet Pals. It is likely the most incredible thing that I've ever seen on this. What they do is you get, oops, go back. You get, if you go into it, you just get these little paper figures that you have to move across, and it looks like it's nothing major to do. If you press start, and I'll give you some time to get through it. And you can you can you get a free version, which gives you just this cowboy background. Are people all sort of there? Um, and you can buy extra extra bits, you know, director's pass, where you have all these things. But you, this is what was done in a start to finish hour and twenty minute lesson, likely. You can, but this is one that um, one of my boys did. I'm a bike robber. And I'm gonna rob a bank, because I'm stupid and my name's a clitter. <laughs> my mama always said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna rob. Yeah! What do I do? I can rob! I'm gonna get that dang crap for you, and then I bought my money. Did you hear me? I said I bought my money. Okay, I love you. <laughs> If you don't already know if my name is Cletus, and I was just been chased by a cowboy, because I robbed a bank and the old man killed this cowboy killing machine, which is a man, that he wants to kill me. He wants this money that I need from the bank, because I'm so stupid. I don't know why I did it. I'm just an idiot, so <laughs> goodbye. This is my last day. Oh my God, here he is now. Get back here, you dang varmint. Watch when I get you. I'm gonna eat you up. Oh, dang, he got away again. That stupid robber. I don't know why he did that, because now I gotta kill him. And I don't want to, but I got to. Hey, Earl, I'm sorry for taking your money, mister. Just please don't get that man to shoot me. Oh, thank you for my money back. Now, goodbye. Hopefully, he doesn't kill you. I'll try and see him on the way home. Bye. <laughs> Come here, you dang varmint. Now you're gonna die. You shouldn't have took that money. I don't want to kill you, but I got to. No, no, please don't. Please, my name's Cletus. I'm almost... Oh, I can't even remember how old I am. Please just don't kill me. Wait, I'm only 30 years old. Come on, man. I still got a long time to wait. Too bad, cowboy. You shouldn't arrive from that bank, you little critter.
Turns out he was shooting him because he couldn't figure out how to make him fall down. <laughs> fall down, fall down. Oh, my kids. What do I get? I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. All right. It is so amazing. And that was literally done. He did, showed him how to do it, sat outside. And it looks so simple when you're, you know, that it's boring and sort of all of that. But what you can turn out with it is is awesome. And what it does to a child's self-esteem to have that. And I asked his permission. And I said to him, I was coming here and I was going to show it to all these people. And he was like, seriously chuffed, so, as am I. Anyway, and another app that, this one is in fact not an app really, it's a, what's called a web app. You go on to a website and you can get it on on your um, iPod. You've used this, haven't you, as well? It's, it's brilliant. Um, it's this man called John Johnson who comes from um, uh, Scotland, who I just happened to read about it on a blog, and he had gone into a school doing it, and uh, I then did it with my class, wrote about it on a blog, and then Damien did it with his class, and... It's short, it's short miles, right? Say what? Oh, it's the, short miles. Okay, and it's absolutely brilliant. It's, it's very simple. Um, it's cool, what, and what's really good about it is you don't really need to have an iPod Touch. It is better with an iPod Touch, I think, because just everything's better with an iPod Touch. Um, but uh, unless it's an iPad, in which case then it's likely better with an iPad. Um, but you can go on to um, a website which has a fake iPod Touch on it, and you type in something like, say, cat, which hopefully should be fine, not bring up anything too dodgy in that. Um, which it is a good idea to do it as a test run in your school just in case and don't have any dyslexic children type things in because how this child ended up with the pictures he did I'm still trying to figure out but anyway he did the right thing which was miss I think this is wrong um, so um, you choose a picture and it comes up with these three lines. What a loon is, I likely should have said, is a type of a haiku where it has three words, five words, and three words. So if people want to give me three words to describe this cat cute. for the first line. Cute. Ooh, spelling. M-I-S-C-H. I before E. I-O-U-S. Right? Is it typing in, or is it not? Hold on. No, it's not. Let's go back to cute. Cute, mischievous. Yep. And it's obviously not spelled right. Right. It has to be I'm primary. Remember that, right? Feline. Feline. Okay. Now five lines for the five words for the second line. Orange. <laughs> Dodgy. 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 Stripey. Hungry. One, two, three. I spelled stri stripey wrong. Agile. Okay, that's it. We've got that. <laughs> and now three. You can be suspicious down at the end. Oh, suspicious. Suspicious. I still can't spell it. <laughs> say spells check, say pork, so every time. Uh, two more words. Ginger. Ginger. <laughs> and why don't we say cat? Which likely doesn't want a comma after it. And then you do create poem. And you do it hasn't come out the right way. It's supposed to, it comes out then as a picture, and you can, it basically turns what is quite a simple thing into the presentation of it looking very, very good, which we then did. Uh, so these were the things that my boys did. They, they had to choose animals, and we then used um, iMovie on the iPods, and no, on the i 
on my iPhone we used it, and the inbuilt microphone. And these were all the comments that people made after we had put on what you're about to say, which is... So again, taking it just another step. Deadly, killer, strong, tough, big, colossal, fast, agile, reckless, vicious beast. It is strong. It is big and mighty. I like it. Scary and horrible. Very deadly and very cruel. It is underground. It's a monster, a creepy dark wolfish, funny, curious. A whale shark, not a whale or a shark, be careful of it. It's nice, cool, furry, and angry, violent, and protective hunter. Watch out, people. Lovely and sweet, furry, nice, beautiful, playful, and cute and cuddly. Big white mouth, scary with very big teeth. And again, it, it makes what's a very simple thing into something much, much better. And I defy any child not to be hugely proud of what, um, what the end product is. And they are learning and they are being hugely motivated. Just very, this is definitely for primary teachers, but I don't know if you've ever had to do reading assessments, running records, keeping records of it. I only found this last night. It's basically all it does is the number of words that you have, the child has read, the number of errors, number of self corrections, and it does the entire running record for you, giving you a score rather than having to work it out by hand, calculator. I just think it's a shortcut and it works really well. So it, um, it's just something that uh, that works. These are two sites that I think are hugely helpful. I don't know if you've tried any of these, Damien. The Learning in Hand is a guy called Tony Vincent. And this is an Australian woman, Jenny Ashby, who's done lots and lots of stuff. And if you're ever going to have anything to do with iPods, iPads, definitely go and visit um, these two sites. They've got just loads of ideas, loads of ways to avoid pitfalls of using them. Um, I was going to go through about setting up a class, how my kids, how we get the work off, some of the work off their um, iPods is that they email it to me. And sometimes people say, well, we don't have school email accounts or we don't have, we don't want the kids using it. How do you do it? And Gmail has something where you can do, you, you set up like a master account. So you set up Oak Class. And then, so I'm then Oak Class, and every email with my password comes to me. I then set up for each of the children Oak Class plus one at gmail.com, Oak Class plus two, Oak Class plus three. I put in the same password for all of them, so it can be whatever. Don't tell the child what the password is, because I don't really want them using this as an email. I just want them getting stuff off their iPod to me. And it, it works. It's, it's, a, it's a way. And then if they ever do, unfortunately, send an email to another child in the class, being unkind, it instantly comes to me, and I also know which iPod it came from, because it'll say, iPod Touch 3 said, you smell. So I can go, you know, you're not supposed to do that. So it's just a, a very simple way of setting, if, or if they have to sign up for oh, things like Storybird and all of those things, it's just a good way of getting uh, emails without really having to set up emails. So that's... There is somewhere a step-by-step -step instruction that's better than that. And that is me. That, um, we write about what we do on our adventures, and I'm at EBD35 if you want to follow me on Twitter. And as the boy in my class said, iPod touches, they just make things make sense. So thank you very much. Look, I know we're here for some fun, but as you can see, it, it really, really, really 
He's a really good pedagogy. And he does fantastic teaching and learning. I work at center level, and now I'm jealous mm -hmm. of, of what, what, what Mary can, and Dilly can show us what can be done with the students. And I think I'm going to find a way to get him in there somewhere. Can I just maybe take, we take a little oxygen break for a minute and let you know the bar is open. Our next, um, our next turn or act or speakers or session starts with a little video, so I want you to be comfortable for that. And we're going to have a little spot prize. Get out your, 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 um, take it to two spot prizes coming up now. One on your orange ticket. Orange ticket number 45. You didn't get a ticket. For the next tweet I see up there, from someone who's actually in the building, can have a spot prize. Okay. Um, the bar is open, lads. You can drift up and down as you need. But can I just say, please, 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 please. We have technology here that I don't want any beer spilled on. Or alcohol. Because I'd get in trouble with Now, there's the, there's the gorgeous game that I was speaking about earlier on. Um, if you have any queries about where, what, how, much or whatever, talk to him at some time. Help yourself to drink at the bar. We give, yeah. Maybe you can the break with Tom and Sarah and then start to in County Wexford and last March we were approached like Damien School to go to a school in London to see the iPod touches and work. Now to be brutally honest myself and Colin hadn't a clue. We're not techies by no stretch of the imagination. So we went to this school in London, we saw them and we were amazed. So we come in here today we said the best way for you to understand how it works and how well it works is for you to see it. So we do have a short video for you to see with the kids opinions on it because to be honest it's them that matter really when it comes to this. We started with iPods in both of our classes so we had 27 and 27 using iPods last March. 
the success has been phenomenal. So we decided this year to expand it. So we now have 21 classes in our schools. We've only 21 classes in the school using the iPads. We've over 300 <coughs> iPads. Um, we have 30 iPads that we use in our special classes. We have two special classes, two reading classes, a language unit and an Asperger's unit. So, as Mike said, we have literally flooded it with iPods. And I'm sure you can appreciate we wouldn't do it unless we could see the benefit of it. Um, what I want to do is just let you have a look at the video, which goes through all the basic setup and lets you see the kids actually using them. And then what we'll do is we'll take a, just a whistle stop tour of a few apps that we find really, really good. So this just might give you an idea of, of how they work and how much enjoyment kids out of it, get out of it. Now, just we are a Desh band one school. Oral language is an area of development in our school. So if you don't understand anything, it's just Ennis Gorthy language, don't worry. <laughs> we'll explain it later. <laughs> One of the real challenges of teaching and learning with technology is actually putting technology in children's hands and allowing them opportunities to manipulate and use technology for their classroom learning. In March of this year, St. Gaines Primary School in Escorthy took a step away from the interactive whiteboard and embraced the A generation by introducing iPod touches into two of its fourth classes. The purpose of this project is to investigate the use of this technology as a learning tool in the classroom. Each child in the class has access to his or her own iPod, and the class has an Apple MacBook to sync and charge the devices. Both classes have internet access with the addition of an airport in the classroom to boost the connectivity speed. The iPod touches internet access goes through the school filtering system so the children can surf in safety. The uses of the iPods are infinite and varied. They have proved an invaluable tool in almost every curricular area, from maths to visual arts. The iPods are almost replacing the textbooks in some subjects, with the books becoming only second resources of information. The children have become very adept at using the internet to source data about given topics. The children have learned very quickly to filter their searches to find information appropriate to their own level. The children have also become adept at summarising and extracting what they need from the information they find. These are skills that are incredibly difficult to teach independently, but which children are learning with ease by using the iPod touches. One area that we have really noticed significant progress in is the level of children's oral language development. The children's oral language skills were not only improving due to the use of apps explicitly aimed at language development, such as Rory's Story Cube, but also because the children are finding more and more opportunities to talk about and explain their learning to their peers. It's about clockwork. You have to try and get these blue ones working, and you have to use these white ones, you see, mm -hmm. and to uh, do it. Mm -hmm. They go on top of each other and they're the only ones that can make it go. The yellow one down there is the one that starts it. Okay. And how did you figure this out? I figured out from playing from the start of it. it I learned it very quickly. It's just Is it easy to learn on this or? It's easy to learn on it, yeah. How come? I know, it's just, it's a game in there and I People just learn quickly. You touch the screen to play and um, this is what to do on it. Um, I'm on level 15 and this is it. What you do is you have to try and get this ball to 
go on that there so you can complete the level. So you go onto this little corner box down here. So you press that and you have these rocks and these things. And you try to make the ball go on that by using this. You do that with your finger and you press the outside of it to turn it around like that. So you can do all different things with it. And it's a, it's a really good game for stuff and people, uh, for people and um, concentrate uh, most of times. And when they're learning how to fix things, it's really good for them too. This is change the teaching that we have encountered. The uses are infinite and the learning potential is astounding. The only boundaries are the boundaries that you yourself put in place. Seeing the iPod touches in action and the results we are getting speak for themselves. The green screen projects they practiced and rehearsed and scripted and did, but literally that's what the kids said, what they thought about it. Ryan at the end and is getting rid of all the wasting lead and pencils and all that stuff. That's completely what they think. Now I could stand here for hours and tell you how amazing they are and the benefits that we have gotten from them, but to see those kids who come from homes 
where iPod wouldn't have been heard of. These kids, they're lucky to get fed in the morning and get to school. And to see them succeeding so well, and like Damien said, the biggest thing is the fact that each child has one and it's completely differentiated. So every child is achieving all the time. And it's amazing to see if you have a child, I know we had a child last year who is basically he's functionally illiterate in fourth class. He can write and read his own name and that's pretty much it. And when he was given the iPod, it was like giving him a new lease of life. Like if they were researching something, he couldn't go and read everything that he got. But straight away without being told, instead of Googling, say it was Titanic, he'd Google image Titanic and he'd get all his information from pictures. So something like that for kids who need a bit of extra help, it's just amazing. For the good kids who are well able, it just sends them to the next level all the time without you having to do anything. So I'm going to stop talking about them because I would talk forever. If you have any questions, come find, nab one of us at the end and we'll <coughs> go through any questions. What we're going to do now is let you have a go at some of the apps that we use on a regular basis. Um, the first app that we're going to show you is one that Mary mentioned, it's Rory Story Cubes. Um, we use this an awful lot for our language because it is our pet at the moment to try get our kids and their yokes and their things and their queers somewhat into sentences. It's brilliant. It's nine dice, you shake it, there's a picture on each side. The idea is they have to make a story. You can move them around, tell a story as ridiculous as you want. They can take a picture of it and they can go back to it. So you can use it for free writing, for creative writing later on. It's also great for Irish or if you were doing modern languages or even even in secondary school, if you're talking special needs kids, it's just a brilliant app. Just have a quick go at it, make up a two second story with your friend, person beside you, and just have a play with it for a minute. Yeah, I can just hear Max saying you can actually buy them physically, but. <laughs> your avatar which is the character you play with can you all click on now I'm not telling you the name of the app yet on purpose sorry click on division and then click on the hardest level so that you can all have a go and we'll see if someone can tweet the ants tweet bingo or shout bingo when they get it so it's Matt's bingo in the app. so it's Matt's bingo division and the hardest level and good luck. It's the last page. You, you only get the prize if you work at the hardest. Yeah. And we'll know. No. There is much easier levels, guys, for younger people or for people who struggle. But go with the hardest level. Can I use my calculator? No. <laughs> no cheating. It's not cheating, it's using alternative methods. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you can't do it. The two is out there, so. Are you going here tomorrow? Very much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Do you have to do hard? I think we trust them. Um, guys, I know you probably won't believe this, but that is the favourite app in our school at the moment. They absolutely adore it. So if you're still working away, 
you can go back to it, don't worry. Um, lads, that's teaching tables done for you. You never have to try teach tables again. My class come in first thing in the morning, grab their iPods and do 10 minutes of that. And they absolutely adore it. Um, are we ready to flip on to another one? Because it makes sense. What do you do with the noise? I, my class turned the volume down. Oh, okay. 30 of them. Yeah, yeah, right your head. But, yeah, just turn the volume down, they're perfect. Um, guys, we will move on. I know these are, we're flying through them. Um, we might as well show you, flip it, one of the, you heard one of the boys talking about games that we play, that's just for fun. This is a great, it's basic anima animation, it's called Flip It, and we do actually have one that a child did before. It's a really simple animation app that they absolutely adore. So, Colin has one here that one of the kids did, but just go into it and see if you can have a go at doing it. <laughs> It's really simple, so it's just really, really simple. Every kid can write their name. Brilliant. It just flicks through. Kids going, yeah. Just set an idea. Um, the kids learned how to, you can actually bring in images from the internet as background and our kids, there's always somebody dying in them. So they have sharks, people been eating, monsters, but they love it. Do you want more? Or? So we are. Do you want more? Right, guys, we'll just do one last one. Um, with the last one we're going to do is a great science app. You know yourself, if you have to have resources for all the subjects, it's very hard to get them. And I know myself, trying to do anything with forces of motion and having to have pieces of gutter and sandpaper and all those kind of things, you never have them. Um, the app called Gear, you actually saw one of the kids using it on the video. It's a really, really simple app, but they absolutely adore it. So if you just want to go on to Gears and have a quick look, and we'll leave you be then.
Right guys, that's us, we're going to leave you at that. I know you could play away forever and there's hundreds of apps that we could show you, but that's just a taster of some of the ones that we use in our school. Thanks a million. of the students to our inspectorate, yeah. both levels, and I think I would really, really love to show them a film of all of ye in the penny arcades here around the tables, playing and learning. But I think the little guy put his hand on it, or he put his heart into it when he said, I'm learning, but I don't know that I'm learning. I mean, they're learning facts, but they're learning the skills of going to find facts. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Sarah Scollum. And I also think a big shout out to their principal, Peter, who is so behind this. This is just driven from management through the staff. I think the parents are yeah. behind it as well. So thank you so much. It's just incredible. So can I actually ask you to leave your eye pads just for a few minutes? And is that is that um, Prezi presentation up there, here? No, no I can get Just it. have a nice little picture. I close it down. Did you close it down? Uh, okay, well then we just leave it. It's all right. Uh, you missed it. comes up really fast. Uh, no, leave it. Leave it. Okay, we're just going to go over to the dark side just for a few moments, please. Quadric. Karen Shaw. Quadric O'Duffy is a um, member of the Sessie Executive, and he's just going to give us a whistle stop tour. Of um, this, I'm not dressed in black for nothing. And I picture, I picture Darth Vader performing, and uh, just a quick quiz and stop tour of an alternative view, let's say. <coughs> Hi all. Um, I can't believe I'm here at a computer conference talking about a mobile phone, but it's actually incredible the power that's contained in this phone. Um, I bought my first computer about 13 years ago in France, and it hadn't a tenth of the memory, the power, the ability of this simple little phone. So I want to talk about a few things that it can do. Um, now, uh, I suppose it, for it to be seen as an alternative option um, to the Apple products, not in the sense of competition, but in the sense of um, more options, uh, we're talking about mobile computing, and it is, in effect, a mobile computer. Um, I want to look at some apps, and I want to look at how the ordinary teacher, us in the ordinary classroom, well, maybe we're not ordinary, maybe we're extraordinary if we're here on a Friday night, um, how we can use it, uh, you know, how it can help us in our teaching, or how it can help us as a teacher, okay? Um, the operating system I'm talking about is Android, which means it's, it's, uh, it's Google's um, mobile operating system. It's quite new, it's only been developed in the last couple of years, it's really still in its infancy, and despite that it has reached number one in terms of um, the OS on smartphones just recently. Um, okay, I didn't much notice on this, so it's, what I have is just a bunch of screenshots taken from this particular phone, the model is a HTC um, Desire, and I'm just going to whiz through them. There's a bit of an overlap with some of the apps that you've seen already, but um, We'll, we'll flick across them pretty fast. So as I say, that's the operating system, that's the phone. Uh, in terms of availability, you can get it now free of charge for most suppliers if you pay up for um, pay monthly um, option. Um, in order to get apps, you go to the app, the Android market. Now, you know, where do you start? You, know, you could have so many apps, tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of them. But we want to try and you know, narrow it down a bit and talk about what's useful to us, the teacher. So I've subdivided them into three categories. Uh, school subject related stuff. There's um, the classroom communicator. And finally, the techie teacher. OK? Um, by the way, they're all free apps that I've chosen, partly because I'm, I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> no, I want to show what's, what's available out there. Free, no cost whatsoever. I have some other apps that, that cost, but just the free ones. Um, and apologies, they're mainly dedicated to second level, because that's where I work. OK, so um, first of all here, for French, we have uh, French verbs, it's called. You simply select your verb, and it gives you uh, all the conjugations. You can click on it, it'll give you the sound of it. If it's in red there, it's irregular. If it's white, it's regular, and so on. Still on verbs, um, based on the excellent website, Le Conjugaire, uh, you type in the verb. There are something like 4,000 verbs listed. You, by the way, for most of the apps I'm showing you, you don't need to be online. 
okay, that'll work offline. Type in the verb and it'll fully conjugate it uh, in the same way. Okay, you've Google Translate. Again, my option English to French, but there are tons of languages available. As you see at the bottom, there's an SMS translation option. Um, and if you see the little microphone there, instead of even inputting the text, you must hit the microphone and speak into your phone. Very handy if you're traveling in Germany or somewhere with no German, speak into it and it'll repeat back to me in German what the directions are, whatever, whatever, it, is, whatever it is I've said to it. Okay, um, for example, there, Earth. It gives me a few options. I'm looking for earthquake, and there we have ton le monde there, and we can hit on the, on the audio and, and listen to it. Okay? Um, really fabulous app here is Google <laughs> Sky Map. It's a pity I can't demo it, but um, it effectively, uh, we say for geography or astronomy, um, when you fire it up, based on your coordinates and your location, it will show you the position of the stars and the planets in the sky, and as you move the phone around, obviously it moves, so it'll give you the location relative to your own position. Um, there we have another one. Uh, you can also select time travel, where you could go back in time, you could change it to last month, and it'll show you where the moon was at that, at what phase it was at, and so on. Okay, so moving away from uh, this, moving, speaking of history, by the way, you have a history app, you can say today in history and what happened on that day. Back to geography, for example, you have your, your Google Maps, uh, you know, information, you've got your, what do you call the street view, um, navigation, voice guided. Here you have for the geography teacher, um, it's like unlimited um, ordnance survey maps. Um, find places if you're on a school tour, if you're on a field trip, um, so on. Uh, this particular app is called um, My, My Tracks. Again, it's useful if you're on, on a hiking tour with, uh, with students or you're on a field trip, and it'll track based on GPS exactly where you've gone, uh, the speed you were moving at, and so on, all the different information you see there. That was a hike up Mount Brandon um, there a few weeks ago, and you can see in green the altitude, and in, in blue was the, uh, the speed, so my speed was decreasing as, the, <laughs> as I was going uphill. Okay, uh, then you can fire up the, um, your track up onto um, Google Maps and into Google Docs. O open up Google Maps on your PC, and there you have it, um, an overlay of, of, uh, of where you've been. Um, next, uh, ideally suited for the digital creator um, course, you have Photoshop Express um, app for the phone, where you can, you, know, you, have, you, can, you can edit your photos that are on the phone, or else you can go online, sign up for it. You can share, upload photos to various different um, services. Okay, if you take a photo here, any guesses what it is? <laughs> it's a, it's a, a close-up of a single blade of grass with frost to one side of it. Again, it's on Mount Brandon. There was a build-up, it's not snow, it's frost from the wind. And again, you could go into it and you can edit the photo, you can crop straighten and so on, some of the different um, uh, features. Uh, another one there, you can see the cross the top of the hill and the, the ice built up on the side of it. You can, there are a number of effects and borders you can put on it and so on. Okay, so a very handy app for any students of um, Digital Creator. Uh, again, you know, FX camera, this is called, you can, as you're taking the photographs, it'll apply effects to the, to the photo. Um, okay, for the younger um, kids, my own two kids in particular, they love these. Um, you know, you, it's called Kids, uh, kids ABC Letters. Uh, this one here, they just click and drag to form the letters. There are a number of different activities within it, and, you know, th th there's audio feedback as they're doing it. There's it's completed. Another one here is kids join the dots. And again, a number of options. You can make it more difficult or more easy. You can, you can opt. In this case, the next, the next number is highlighted there in orange. You can cut that off and a bit more challenging for a slightly older child. Um, okay, uh, again, on small kids, science facts. All that, okay. Now back to second level, the periodic table for chemistry. Excellent app, according to the chemistry teachers. Um, you get all your information on the what do you call them, the elements. Uh, you can then test yourself by name, abbreviation, whatever, and on it goes. Um, another little app is a metal detector. Yep, believe it or not, it's not a joke. It actually functions as a metal detector. I took a, a knife from the kitchen, put it beside it, and bingo, detected. <laughs> <laughs> as to why you want it in the class, I'm not sure. Maybe physics? <laughs> physics? Yeah. Okay, uh, really quickly, a frequency generator. I'd love to demo it, but haven't time. Um, uh, decibel, this one, is, will measure the, the intensity of sound. 
in your classroom. Uh, the unfortunately named G-strings, but uh, for tuning a musical instrument or for generating uh, a certain note uh, chord in, in a music class. Uh, maths, maths apps, maths apps and the calculator. Okay, moving on really quickly to classroom communication, the second section. Um, if you're into Edmodo, you have your app. Okay, you can, you can uh, you know, update it. Uh, Skype, obviously, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Gmail, Gmail, your, sorry, your Google, if you have Google Apps in your school, your shared calendar. Uh, events by day view, add an event, uh, edit an event. If you have WordPress press blog, you can fully um, edit it and so on. Uh, Ustream, if you can stream directly from the phone to uh, um, live on the web via Ustream, and obviously YouTube. Okay, and finally for the techie teacher, which I think most of us must be, um, you have, uh, what's this called, track, sorry, not the track of where it was, uh, oh yeah, Gmode controller, and basically it functions as a remote control for your, for your PC, or else you have the option within it as a Gmode touch, where this here, your screen functions as a touchpad on your PC, so you move around the classroom and control it. Another function is you can browse uh, the documents on your PC and play them just but from the phone, play them back over your projector or else play them on the phone. Um, connecting then, if you want to save up by to a USB key, you can use it as a memory storage, uh, syncing to it. Um, as an IT coordinator, very, very useful here is network discovery. Just fire it up and it'll give you all the IPs of all the devices in your, in your network. Yeah, and then when you have the IP, you can then use Android VLC and remotely connect and fully control the PC from this little gadget here. Again, from a mobile phone, it's, it's unreal. Um, portable Wi-Fi hotspot, if you're in a spot where there's no Wi-Fi, you turn your G 3G phone into a Wi-Fi um, unit and then your PC or your laptop or whatever can pick up on the Wi-Fi from the phone. Um, if then you have problems with the speed of your net, like we had earlier on, you had speedtest.net app, and it'll, it'll test it. Uh, Dropbox, obviously, for sharing. Uh, Google Docs, Engadget, for keeping up to date with what's going on. And again, it goes on and on. Um, a lot of apps mentioned there, sorry for going on a bit. I really recommend this one, though, is AppBrain, for keeping track of what apps you have. You can um, share your apps with it, you can sort them, you can, you can install apps remotely um, from Sorry, from a PC, you can, from, a, from the web, you can install it directly to the phone. Uh, you can share them, obviously, and speaking of sharing, if you have any interest in the apps I've just mentioned, you'll find them there. Thank you. Sorry. Ooh, sorry, I'm stuck on you. Oh my god. That's okay. Hang on, Kieran, I tore his tie. You're okay. No, I'm not. I'm okay, but you're not. <laughs> Thanks, Dermotha, uh, Mark. Um, we will ask Mark to give us his list of apps. We have already given you some of the apps that the, the teachers have shown us tonight as well. Those of you who came early enough to get the iPod Touch with the camera, you can use the QR codes to get into Shomarana or EBD35, Sarah and Colin School. And who's the fourth? Yes, Kieran. That's just a biography of Kieran, but I think we can, we all know that already. Now, the last, I can hear the trolleys of food appearing in the hallway, and I can smell too loud. Is it, John? I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need a microphone. I can smell the food arriving, and we have one more guest to um, take us on a roller coaster, but he has very specific instructions. We must get into groups of three. And we must designate A, B, and C. I will tell you what to do when you've made groups of three and decide to A, B, and C. Thank you. 
iPod Touch internet on and connect to the heritage. I almost said the other place. A and B, A and C switch off. We don't have the bandwidth for everybody to work. You're working in teams of three, so we're working on these content and we are switching off A and C. And I am handing over to Kieran McCall. Good evening. Good evening. Great. Um, Mags kind of set me a very difficult challenge. She said, was we do something that was fun and a little bit different at the end of the night? And she said, then she just said no pressure and walked away. <laughs> so I set myself a very difficult challenge tonight of trying to use things that I have in the classroom or that we have available in the classroom. And I'm trying to use things that we didn't need to buy. So my very expensive setup that I've used is a music notation stand, which cost me four euro because I bought it on eBay. Um, I found a very old video camera in my school, in the schools that we work in, there's loads of them, so one of them got sent back to me in the office, so I'm using that. It's a very old video camera, but any video camera will do. And I connected the video camera to my laptop. And what I've done is, I wanted to have a visualizer for something like 10 euro, rather than having a visualizer for a couple of hundred, or indeed, the really good ones, for about one and a half thousand. Everything else I'm doing tonight requires the video camera and requires PowerPoint. And that's all I'm using. So everything you'll see is PowerPoint and video camera. I'm not actually using PowerPoint, but I could be. I'm using uh, one called Keynote, which is what's available on the Mac. So the challenge I've got today is I'm going to bring you on one big game. All of us here today are going to play one big game, and it's all based around the screen up here. What I need is, it's going to take you on an aptastic, and this is going to get corny, by the way, an aptastic journey that's going to begin and end in the palm of your hands. You're going to be asked lots of questions, so you're going to have to work as teams to come up with the answers to the questions. And there are prizes. These prizes you cannot even buy in a shop. <laughs> it's because nobody would sell them. <laughs> there are prizes you cannot buy in a shop. We're going to bring you on a journey. And we're going to take you on a journey which is going to bring you to a very far, far away place. And then it's going to bring you back. And then it's going to bring you somewhere else. And then it's going to bring you back. And you're going to be asked to ask, answer questions. To answer questions, you're going to use one iPod. We don't need them just yet. But the reason that we're only using one is because this is designed for a classroom where we have no more than 34 children, if we were lucky. No more than 34. So it wasn't designed for 100 people. So that's why we've gone to one iPod for everybody. And the one other thing about this as well is everything, every question we ask you is going to be based up on the screen. So it's all based around you paying very close attention to what happens up here. Now, it wouldn't be a game show unless we actually went and had a really corny intro with some nice corny intro music. So I'm going to play this intro, and there's a possibility of a question being asked. So I'm going to bring you back memory lane and see if you can recognize one of these computers that you had in your classroom. Have a look at this. It's a special place because it's going to take our classroom to anywhere in the world that we want to go. Now, in some of the schools that we've worked in, we've been very unlucky. Our schools have not been able to go on school tours for lots of different reasons. One, they may not have had the funding to do so. Two, actually, may not have had the funding to do so. Three, probably the same as the first two. But four, the weather might have been miserable. Or five, actually, they just did not have enough teachers to go with free class. So today in our virtual museum, let's go inside and have a look. What we're going to do is we're going to take the virtual museum, or our virtual tour, back to the classroom. We're going to reverse it. We're going to stay in our classroom and bring their tour to them. Where will we go today? 
Thank you. So, I have an answer to this day, because <laughs> I was hoping somebody would answer that. Oh. Anyone recognize this? Newgrange. Yeah. Newgrange. We are going to bring Newgrange to our classroom. And to do what we're going to do is through an app called 3D Gallery. It's a free app that's available. It's not on your machines, don't worry just yet. But come with me while I take you on a tour. And let me just see if I can go in. Here is my 3D gallery. Let me just take a look around. Did you know that New Grange was constructed over 5,000 years ago, making it older than Stonehenge, England, and the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt? New Grange was built during the Neolithic or New Stone Age by a farming community, Note and Bed, are similar mounds that together with New Grange have been designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Archaeologists classified New Grange as a passage tomb. However, New Grange is now recognized to be much more than a passage tomb. New Grange is a large kidney-shaped mound covering an area of over one acre, retained at the base by 97 curbstones, some of which are richly decorated with megalithic arts. New Grange is best known for the illumination of its passage and chamber by the winter solstice sun. And at the entrance to the passage of New Grange, there is an opening called a roof box. Held a great surprise for those who unearthed it. Its purpose is to allow sunlight to penetrate the chamber on the shortest day of the year, around December 21st, the winter solstice. Now, what I love about this app is we can take any tour anywhere we want to go. Because all we have to do is go to Google Images and Google the topic we want to talk about. Tooting Ground, maybe geography, maybe history, maybe physics. Now if I just click on the actual settings icon there, I can go in and add in all the photographs, customize my virtual tour to different rooms in the house, make it look like a gallery, or change everything about it so we can bring our class anywhere we want to go. So the first question I'm going to ask you is a very difficult one. I'm going to ask you as a group to come together to answer the question. But to do that, I'm going to have to show you how to answer the question. We hear a lot about the Promethean boards and that they have the interactive clickers, which are great. And I think interactive with the classroom is fantastic. But what I want to do is, I want to ask the audience here with the iPods. And I want to do it a little, little bit different way than we did it earlier. What I want you all to do is take up your iPod. And you are going to look for a click, an icon called eClicker. It looks like that app up the very top there. Did you all find it? Yeah? When you do, let me just go in and I click on my e clicker here as well. When you do, you should see a name. And this name to, to the top of it will say something like, in my case, Frankie, Feature Demo iPad. Do you all see that? Yes. Excellent. What I want you all to do is click on that. Everybody or just the one else? Just the, the one person in your team. So the one person in your team, click on that. And when you do, in a few moments, you should be presented with a dialogue box. So it'll take a few moments to load up because we are using a lot of people here. And you'll see here that if I was in my classroom, I can actually add five children to this one answer. And we'll see what the five children are going to say. But in this case, it is a competition. I am pitching you against each other. So I want you to come up with a team name. Take two minutes out. Ten seconds out to think of a team name. Something that is uh, polite, not rude. And something that will be presentable on the big screen. When you have your team name, all you've got to do is click on the box and, and type in the name. When you type in the name, your next step is to click on the button go. So let me repeat that while you're all chatting. When you have your name, you're going to click on the box, line one, and write in the name of your team. When you click on the box, the keyboard pops up. When the keyboard pops up, write in the name, and then click go. When that happens, you should be presented with something like saying, waiting for a question. If you are, Brian, just pull on the table and we'll use for a second. Is that clear to everybody? Do you have any problems? Yeah, you better pick up some base when you're ready. So if you're unsure, I'll just show you on my screen up here. I'm going to write in something very short, kids. And then if I click done, I'm going to click on the submit button. And I should be there, it should be there telling me that we're going to be waiting for a submit, waiting for a question. Did you all get that? Is anybody having any difficulty? Yes, well, we're still waiting for a question. That's okay, because I haven't sent it yet. So you're all waiting for a question. That's really good. That's a good starting point for us. Now, I can tell so far that 29 of you 
of you have logged on. So we have 29 teams in this room are all going to be playing against each other. And what I'm going to do is ask you your first question. Now I hope you are all paying close attention to that little video that we did and that little tour. Because the first question we're going to ask in their game is this one. And the question is, don't worry, your iPads won't do anything just yet. The question is, what year was Newgrange constructed? What is it? 1800 BC, 2500 BC, 800 AD, or 3200 BC? Don't do anything just yet, just have a chat. And everybody, have a look at this. What's going to happen now is that when we click on... If you all look at your iPods right now, And over the top of it, they'll ask you a question and they'll give you some answers. Do you all see it? You have 23 seconds left to ask your question. So let's the right answer. You have, you have 20 seconds left. You've got 14. So setting it up is a piece of click, literally a piece of click. 
So in here, I've got a couple of modules I can look at. In my case, I'm, I'm doing digital creator because we were talking about it earlier. But I'm just going to go in and click on moving image language. Now, I am based on the internet, and I am relying to the demo gods to work. Is it? Yes. OK, so the demo gods are being nice. And in here, I can see my full Moodle environment. And in my Moodle environment, I can scroll up and see the outline. I can go in there and see my lesson one. Lesson one has some PDF, so I'm just going to click on my PDF. As you can see, it's going to load the PDF. And which one do I want? Oh, I've got unit C there. So I'm going to click on unit C. It's loading up my PDF. And in there, it's a demo. Demo guys are being very nice. I can scroll up and down through my PDF. I can just pinch in and zoom what's going on. Here's some stuff that looks like new range. It's got nothing to do with it, but it has a bit of background, so it's all go with that. <laughs> if I can move to the very top of here, it says save. I can now save that locally to my iPod, so it's offline. And now that it's offline, any, anybody and any student that has access to it can access it in their iBook store, which is there for them, download the PDF. But it's not only that. Let me just go back out there, and I'm looking at some other stuff that I like. And I want to go back in and say, back to my courses, and scroll down, and I see in lesson three, I see a video there. It says lesson three video introduction. I'm going to click on the lesson three video. I am aligned with demo gods. I would like to play it. Thank you very much. So it's going to go and open up the video for me, and I'm just going to tilt it down. There we go. Give it a second or two, and in a second or two, here is my video. And if I want to watch the video right now within Moodle, I can do it on my iPod, click on the play button. Now, as I said, we are on the internet, so it may be very slow, but all is there. When I click on play, the video will load up, and I can now watch my video. Very, very cool. Here we go. And there's a video. If I wanted, I could plug in speakers, which I'll do later on, and you'll be able to hear Chris talking about what he's talking about. When I'm happy, away I come. So that's end page. So the question for you on end page, for this round number two, is how much is the, the Moodle end page app? How much do you think it costs? You've got 44 seconds to answer. Remember, the quickest you post, just click on post and that's the matter. Has the question come out to everybody? Who did the question not come out to? One, two, okay, we'll check that in a second. Has everybody else voted? Has everybody else voted? I'll all down there. Okay, let me take a look over there, please. Well, we get that, get that same, just uh, sign and sign back in under the same name. And if we take a look at the voting, the voting comes in, and this is quite interesting. The voting has come in on this one, and when we ask the audience about this, we get a very small percentile getting it right. So, uh, a good 20% a good of you went for A. Another chunk of you went for the right answer, which was B, which was? How much was it? One year, 59. C and D. Now let's take a look at more. And the rankings goes to Ross, iPod Focus, Morgan, Lippin S, the top three, and actually got it right. Where is iPod Focus? I bought all these over here. Do you get to win a spot prize from the two euro store? Give your hand in and see where it goes. That's okay. Okay. So, we're now on to round three. So one of the things that we did notice there was that it was a video. And I'm not a techie. And I would like to learn how to make my own video. So one of the things that we did for this one, we're going to pay very close attention to this one, because this one is probably one of the hardest to answer. When we were in the schools, we noticed a lot of people were struggling making videos in their classroom. So we decided to make our own app. So Fish went and made its own app. And the app was called the Fish Training App. We, used, we, we tried to call the Fish Professional Development app, but that was too long to actually put it to uh, into iTunes. So what we did was we came up with the word Fish Training. And this app basically is completely free. The first thing about this app is it's designed to work offline. So it's designed that if you don't have internet connection, it will work perfectly well. 
What is it? It's basically a full, complete training course to teach anybody how to use media in the classroom for primary and secondary schools. And it starts from the basics all the way across. If I take a course index, in here, it gives you eight modules to start from. It's a self-directed learning course, which is quite unusual for an, for an iPod app, which means that you learn this app in your own time, in your own space, and you do each model when you want in your own time. The app itself remembers where you're coming from, and then it will tell you where you've been, so you don't need to go there again. Let me just introduce you to some of them. One of them here, I'll just take a look at the uh, production. In the introduction, I've got a lot of lessons along the top if I scroll along, and my fingers are all uh, wet. And if I scroll up and down, I've got a video, and then I have some bits and pieces here about learning objectives and your camera. Now, for us to develop a training course for every teacher, it's impossible for me to know what video camera you have in your classroom. It's simply impossible for me to know. I, will, I just can't know that. But I can teach everybody the basics of how to use a video in their camera. And this is, this is just an example of one of the videos that's there. So if I play this video, what I want to do is have a look at how we can use a camera and the, the various different elements within the camera. Now we are using a Canon one here, but a lot of principles will apply to all cameras that you have. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at adding a battery to the camera. The battery normally goes to the back of the camera, but lifting up the viewfinder, and the battery normally slides in and clicks on. Now the downside to watching an app like this is you have to listen to my voice. <laughs> which is not really a pleasant thing, and I do apologize for that, but it's cheaper to use your own voice than to hire somebody in to do it. Now if we scroll across the top, it goes to the very basics. I'm going to leave my fingers are all a little bit soggy. So the very basics in the stuff like if I go to lesson six, I go to script writing. Lesson seven is a great example of three-point lighting. So somebody who's really interested in filmmaking, you can do it. Would you hold to the left-hand side of the room and shine at the subject space? Look at the effect I get. I get a nice little lady, with a shadow over the right hand side and a little bit of a shadow to the right hand side of her nose. Now, have a look what happens if I actually use the light and move it to a different position and use it what's called a fill light. So they're really technical stuff and that's fine and some of us aren't very technical. So you have a choice of how much you want to do. But what's really interesting about this is when we were, we were fighting, fighting the staff, we actually sent it, it's primarily for primary schools, but we sent it to secondary school teachers. And we said, look, it is got lesson plans in it, but I made for primary, what do you think? And all of them came back and said, actually, it's pretty cool. Because while it is for primary, we're so used to adapting content ourselves that we just adapted it for whatever level of age we are at. So if you look here, you go to lesson plans. In here, there are over 16 lesson plans will actually teach you everything you need to know about introducing the concept into the curriculum. So everything about this is using as a curriculum tool rather than a standalone subject. So in here, I can zoom in, look at different subject levels, scroll down, look at the introduction of what to use for cinema, if I was to scroll down and look at some of the other ones in Lesson 13, this is all the creative, creative writing for film, all these lesson plans are there for you to print and you can send them off. You've also then got a, quite a lot of footage of video footage in the app that you can watch and teach yourself as you go. So round three question for you is, how many hours of footage or minutes of footage do you think are available in the Fish app? Now if you have a problem with your, with, with your iPods, everybody press your home button right now. Come out, come out of, uh, come out of e-clicker, okay? When you all come out of e-clicker, in a moment I'm going to ask you to click on e-clicker again. As I said, it's not designed for such a big room like this. So would you all now come back into e-clicker and do the same thing as earlier as you did and log in? So take, take it 10 seconds. Is everybody able to log in? Anybody able to log in? And when you are, remember, press submit. Are you, are you all in? You go back and say, okay, we'll, we'll put that there for a second. That's okay. I thought that might happen because there's too many of us here. That's not a problem. So one of the next questions I was going to ask you was, I was going to have a poll. We're going to do this with our hands. It's a very unusual poll because the chances of this happening are, are quite slim to none, to be bluntly honest with you. But in it, the question what it was going to be was, if you could have a generous grant of 100,000 euro and you could spend it on portable devices, what would you spend it on? Now I'm just going to poll that question because the lovely part with eClicker is that you can actually poll it out and you don't have to have a right or wrong answer. So in the classroom you can turn your iPods into complete eClickers and away they go. So, show of hands, who would spend it on laptops? One, two, three, four. Who would spend it on iPod or iPads? Oh, we got some converts. Who would spend it on Android devices? 
three, two hands down the back, and who says it's going to be on networks? And you haven't put a hand up at all. <laughs> I thought that was going to happen. Right, I'm going to move on because I know dinner is about to come and I said it was going to half past. So I'm going to try something a little bit different. Who got the most questions right? But well, we're going to go with this group over here, the bear monkeys, for a second, right? Because they were the first to get the question right. What's lovely about the clicker is we could actually log in and see who scored what, how they scored, all the results are there. But the biggest question that we've got to ask ourselves is, and the challenge we have is, can we predict the future? So we're going back to our classrooms on Monday, and you're going to see loads of things over the weekend. Android, you're going to see mobile, you're going to see handheld, you're going to see desktops. And as a teacher, how are we supposed to know what's going to become the future? For example, how do we future-proof what we want to do? It's pretty difficult, right? Well, one of the things that I, that I would suggest to you is that rather than us being able to future-proof and guessing, we can make very educated decisions about looking at the audience that we've got and going to the conclusion what suits that audience best. Now, I can't prove that with technology right now because the e-clicker went down on me, but what I'm going to try and do is prove it a different concept. And my idea is, if I can predict the future and by taking an educated guess at everybody in this audience, I think we would be able to do it in the classroom with our own students. We know our students best, and we know what technology will work for them. So there's no way of me knowing that you guys won the first prize, you won the second one, and somebody put a hand up. Uh, I was never going to know you're going to be the next person. You're number three, okay? And somebody else put the hand up. Number four, okay? In a moment, I'm going to give one, two, three, or four, and let me ask you one of you here and one of you over here. I'm going to give you a selection of 52. I'm going to give you an option of 52 options. So think about this. There's no way I was going to know you were going to come first after multiple choice questions. There's no way I was going to know you were going to come second. There's no way I would have known that you would put your hand in third. And I certainly would have known that you would put up your hand in fourth. Now, way that when I give you 52 selections of an option, there's no way I know what you're going to pick. Is that right? In a moment, we're going to ask you to pick a card. Any card. From 52 cards. And you're going to think about it, and in a moment, you're going to shout it out. So I want you to think about a card. Any card, 52 cards. And I'm just going to get my mobile phone up here, so we can all see it. Have you got the cards? Yeah? Screen is dead. It's okay, you have to go look. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to, my mobile phone, little bit wonky, there we go. Okay. What card are you going to choose? Three of hearts. Three of hearts. Okay, everybody remember the three of hearts, because I'm going to forget that. What card are you going to choose? Five of diamonds, everybody remember. Three of hearts, five of diamonds, so I'm definitely going to forget these. What card did you choose? <laughs> so there's no way I would have known that she's going to take a couple of seconds to decide, because you probably changed your mind three or four times there, did you? <laughs> so you went for the eight of hearts. Okay, and what card would you like to choose? King of hearts. So we got the three of? Three of hearts. Five of diamonds. Five of diamonds. Eight of hearts. Eight of hearts. And the king of. Which card would we go for? I'm not going to influence this, I'm not going to ask. Which part should we go for? Five times. So we share that very quickly? Five times. You're the first, say it again. No, no, yep. King of hearts. Was that mentioned? Yeah. All right, okay. King of hearts. Brilliant. So let's think about this for a second. The king of hearts. The king of hearts. Oh, the king of hearts is a hard one. And I'll give it a go. Okay, what I need somebody to do is call me at that mobile number again. What was that number, mobile number? 085-282-2822. Sorry, I'll just see it. 85 282 Right, we're going to call Chris O'Brien. We're going to put him on the spot. That number that we put up earlier. Remember, we can't predict the future. We want to look at technology to do that. But we can make very educated guesses about what technology will suit for our kids. Let me see if I can pick the... I hate this. Paul. <laughs> oh, yes. Paul, you've reached Chris. <laughs> I'm not going to take your call right now, but I had a very strange dream last night. I was in a shop and I got my wallet out to pay for something. The door that was inside was a single playing card, the King of Hearts. I hope you can take the phone out there. Anyway, leave me a message. Bye. Thanks, Chris! <laughs> and this is the prize. And the good news is it's time for who? It is time for food.
pedagogy work, have been told to go out to different CA or classes and you can't beat the way they taught us about the, the materials tonight. So thanks very much. classrooms where there's just so much happening. It is amazing and I just want to extend my deepest appreciation and thanks to all of those who presented and absolutely inspired us all so wonderfully. For Damien and Mary, Sarah and Colin, Kieran, Porrick, absolutely, what can I say, can we give them a massive round of applause? And behind the scenes, so many people made all of this possible. We have Aina from an Apple, who supplied what you have played with for the whole evening. We have, <laughs> we have Keith in Type Tech. We have all those people in wonderful Leash Education Centre. Jim, the director, ably assisted by Margaret, Mary, Anya, and colleagues whose names I haven't even been given, but they are the key people. For Lurgus, who is responsible for all our spot prizes. For TeachNet, who very kindly put a podcast up in trying to encourage people and inform people about today. For Kamara, who are always here to help whenever the call comes. And above all, it is Friday night. It is the middle of the term. There is no midterm imminent. There are 90 plus people here in Fort Leash doing what only we are doing in education here. Not our department, not anybody else, but you are here and we are doing it together and it's fantastic. But before I leave, oh sorry, I did forget to, to thank the hotel, without whose enormous cooperation we wouldn't have been able to put all of this together. Thank you, the heritage. But I will leave you with one thought. Please take in your hand now your iPod Touch. Okay? Some of you are very familiar with what I'm going to do. Some of you are not. A number of years ago, a colleague of mine from the physics department in school made me a presentation as she retired. And I would just ask, like to you to contemplate all that you have done tonight with that very, very small piece of equipment that would slip into a back pocket or into a purse very easily. And this was the start of mobile technology. This is the mobile phone that they use in the original Hawaii Five-O. And with that, I leave you. Enjoy the rest of the night. And thank you so much for coming to make it what it is. Sorry, there is one person who... I know she wants to say something, but really, I think we would have to put our hands together for our MC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adrienne. But what I really want to discuss everybody about again, you are more than welcome now to supper, but you're not getting supper until you get your iPod Touch deregistered and back to Anthusa or Brody on shop. So will you make your way and wend your way back to the table from whence you took it and take it out of your box and hand it back. Thank you very much.